Hello everyone. So in this topic, I am going to discuss about detoxification, otherwise known as metabolism of xenobiotics. So this includes what are xenobiotics and the mechanisms by which these toxic compounds are converted into less toxic compounds. What are xenobiotics? So xenos means strange, the compounds which are foreign to our body. The compounds, if they accumulate in our body, it leads to toxicity and those are compounds that are accidentally ingested or taken as drugs or the compounds which are produced within our, our body by metabolism of bacteria. Now coming to the examples of xenobiotics, in the picture you can see there are some common food items that we consume. So these food items they contain a type of preservative or color or they may contain the sweetener. So all these artificial things which are foreign to our body when they accumulate in our body it leads to toxicity so apart from that the drugs that we take are pollutants or insecticides and pesticides that are present on the vegetables so all these come under the examples of xenobiotics now coming to why we need to study about these xenobiotics because when you see if a xenobiotic is not metabolized properly it forms a reactive metabolite so that has high affinity towards DNA, RNA and protein. So when these reactive metabolites bind with these macromolecules, then they are affected in such a way that it leads to cell injury and due to mutations and it may lead to cancer. So in order to understand that, we need to study about the detoxification and the mechanism behind this detoxification. Coming to the phases of the detoxification, there are two stages in which a xenobiotic is processed. Those are called as phase 1 and phase 2. Generally, the xenobiotic enters into the phase 1 and then it is modified and again after that it enters into the phase 2. But there are some exceptions where the xenobiotic may directly enter into the phase 2 reactions. Site of detoxification is liver. Because the enzymes which are required for the detoxification, they are mainly present in the liver. Now coming to phase 1 reactions. So actually what happens in the phase 1 reaction here, when a xenobiotic enters into the phase 1, it is modified by adding a functional group. So that additional functional group may be by oxidation, reduction or hydrolysis. And the product which is formed after phase 1 modification is called as phase 1 metabolite or primary metabolite. Now coming to the first reaction of the phase 1 that is oxidation. In this hydroxylation is the major type of reaction. And this requires the enzyme cytochrome P450 or monooxygenase and is also known as mixed function oxidases. Because these monooxygenases they add only one oxygen atom to the substrate out of the molecular oxygen. Now coming to the example here, you can see the cytochrome P450 is adding one oxygen atom to the xenobiotic which is represented as XH so that it forms XOH. So the toxic compound XH is converted into XOH, so hydroxylated xenobiotic. Now coming to other oxidation reactions, it includes oxidation of alcohols and aldehydes. So these alcohols and aldehydes they are converted into corresponding acids. For example, if you take ethanol, it is converted into acetic acid, methanol to formic acid. Same way aldehydes, benzaldehyde is converted into benzoic acid. Coming to second type of reaction in the phase 1, that is reduction. It is less common when compared with the oxidation type of reaction. The major compounds which are reduced are the azo compounds and the nitro compounds. For example, you can see picric acid is converted into picramic acid by reduction. Same way, chloral which is the aldehyde is converted into trichloroethanol. Now coming to the third type of reaction in the phase 1 that is hydrolysis. The name itself indicates here the mechanism involves the breaking of the bonds like ester bonds, amide bonds or glycosidic bonds using the water molecule and you can see the examples like uh, procaine it is converted into para amino benzoic acid and diethyl amino ethanol 
same way aspirin which is acetyl salicylic acid is converted into salicylic acid plus acetic acid. So using the water molecule here the compounds are broken into less toxic compounds. Coming to phase 2 reactions, the xenobiotic may be processed by phase 1 and then it enters into the phase 2 or there are some xenobiotics that are directly entering into the phase 2 reactions. Now coming to the main reaction in the phase 2, it is only conjugation. So there are different type of conjugating agents which participate in the phase 2 reactions. Most of the xenobiotics they are lipophilic in nature means they can easily cross the plasma membrane and enter into the cell. So that may lead to cytotoxicity. To prevent that the main purpose of the phase 1 reactions is they add a group to the xenobiotic and thereby they modify the xenobiotic. So that modified xenobiotic is converted into a more water soluble form so that it can be easily excreted from the body through urine. Now coming to what is conjugation, in conjugation a chemical combination of one compound with some other happens. There are conjugating agents in our body, those agents will be added to these modified xenobiotics that come out of the phase 1 or directly to the xenobiotic which enters into the phase 2 reactions. The conjugating agents, agents which are added to the xenobiotic, they are not active as such, they are activated. For example, if you see glucuronic acid, its active form is UDP glucuronic acid. Same way, the sulphate, its active form is PAPS, phosphoadenosine phosphosulphate. Cysteine, its active form is glutathione. And acetic acid, its active form is acetylcholine. Same way, methionine, its active form is S-adenosyl methionine. So these active forms of the conjugatings are actually participating in the phase 2 reactions. Among all the conjugating agents, the most important agent is glucuronic acid. So this glucuronic acid is formed in our body by uronic acid pathway. And this glucuronic acid as I told you, its active form is UDP glucuronic acid which combines with a number of xenobiotics. Now coming to the examples of glucuronic acid as the conjugating agent. So in general reaction you can see that XOH is the xenobiotic which reacts with UDP glucuronic acid and this reaction is catalyzed by glucuronyl transferase. So this glucuronyl transferase transfers the glucuronate to the XOH so that it is converted into XO glucuronate. And coming to the most important reaction where this glucuronate is required as a conjugating agent is bilirubin. So bilirubin is water insoluble and that is converted into water soluble compound by the action of enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase. So the function of this enzyme is it transfers glucuronate from the UDP glucuronic acid to bilirubin so that it forms bilirubin diglucuronide. So why here it is mentioned as diglucuronide because in this reaction two molecules of glucuronic acid will join to a single molecule of bilirubin. So that is why it is called as bilirubin diglucuronide. So this bilirubin diglucuronide is more water soluble and less toxic compared with this bilirubin. Apart from bilirubin, glucuronic acid is also involved in the conjugation of benzoic acid, paracetamol and diclofenac sodium. So that will form the corresponding conjugates of the glucuronic acid. Coming to the other conjugating agent glycine, glycine it conjugates a various type of aromatic carboxylic acids. For example, when it binds with benzoic acid, it converts it into hippuric acid. So benzoic acid is toxic and this toxic benzoic acid is excreted in a less toxic form that is hippuric acid. Ben glycine conjugates with salicylic acid or forms salicylonic acid. Same way there are other examples where glycine is conjugating to form a more water soluble compound and less toxic in nature. Conjugation with glutamine. Here 
during normal metabolic pathways for example metabolism of phenylalanine some amount of phenyl estate is formed so this phenyl estate is a toxic compound if its concentration increases it may affect the blood ph and this toxic compound is converted into a less toxic compound and that is phenyl acetyl glutamine by this glutamine which is a amide form of the glutamic acid same way other conjugating agent sulfate again its active form is phosphoadenosyl phosphosulfate so this paps supplies the sulfate group which is required in the conjugation reaction and the most important compounds which are detoxified by this sulfation are phenols cresols indols ketols steroids so all these are detoxified by sulfation coming to the conjugation with glutathione glutathione is a tripeptide consisting three amino acids so this glutathione also participates in the conjugation reaction but there are two forms of the glutathione one is reduced form and the other one is the oxidized form this reduced form is called as gsh which participates in the conjugation reaction and here when it when it binds with the xenobiotic that is x and after the reaction with the glutathione s transferase it forms xsg so this xsg is the conjugated form of the glutathione with the xenobiotic the conjugation with the acetyl coa that is called as acetylation so here acetyl coa combines with for example isoniazid and converts that into acetylated isoniazid and same way it may combine with sulfonylamide and converts that into acetyl sulfonylamide now coming to conjugation with methyl group that is called as methylation and here the donor of the methyl group is sam which is called as s adenosyl methionine the active form of the methionine so this sam is the donor of the methyl group in this conjugation reactions so it donates the methyl group in the reactions where pyridine nicotinic acid nicotinamide thyroxine estrogens epinephrine norepinephrine so all these are methylated before their excretion and conjugation with thiosulfate it thiosulfate conjugates the cyanide which is a highly toxic compound which is normally formed in very small amounts during the metabolism so this cyanide is converted into a less toxic compound that is thiocyanate and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme called as rhodonase or thiosulfate sulfur transferase now coming to summary of this detoxification so in this picture you can see a xenobiotic which enters into the phase 1 reaction is modified by adding a functional group by oxidation reduction or hydrolysis once it is modified by adding this group now that is called as a primary metabolite or phase 1 metabolite so that phase 1 metabolite now enters into phase 2 where it is subjected to conjugation and when it is subject to conjugation the toxic compound is now converted into a very less toxic compound and more water soluble compound so that can be easily excreted so there are some cases where the xenobiotic directly enters into the phase 2 reaction instead of entering into the phase 1 and sometimes the phase 1 metabolite is directly excreted without any modification in the phase 2 reactions thank you